So today I'll be customising this Jurassic World Snap Squad figure. So I'm going to be turning him into the Hypocarno from the game The Isles. The Hypocarno is by far my favourite creature from the game. And I'll be making a journey to Japan soon and I really want to share it all with you guys because I'm going to a lot of dinosaur places, I'm a dinosaur girl, but I don't really like taking photos of myself so I'm going to be taking this guy with me to share the journey with you. So yeah, if you want to see a hypercarno travel through Japan, just check out my Instagram in January. So right now I have drilled holes into his head and I'm inserting wire and gluing it down with UV resin. I'm doing all this to give his horns extra strength because I'm a bit of a klutz and I have butterfingers, there's a good chance I'll be dropping this poor guy in Japan several times and I want to give him the best chance of surviving. <laughs> So I'm even dobbing a bit of UV resin onto the very tips of the wire just to prevent the wire poking through and cutting while I'm sculpting. It's just a preventative measure. So yeah, the wire is now inserted in his head and I've used tin foil to bulk out his head because I, again I want to keep this very light. If I make it too heavy he's going to be tipping over all the time. So I'm using a two part epoxy sculpt like I always use for when sculpting on custom toys. Um, yeah, so just sculpting away with two part epoxy. This sort of stuff takes about three hours to set, but I only give myself a two hour working window, which is why I only work in small parts. You can see the Nictus head poking through and he's missing a lot of teeth. That's because I'm working in small parts. So I'm using a variety of different tools just to get the effects I want. I don't follow the rules when it comes to tools. I use whatever I think is going to work. Um, if you're wondering how I smooth out two-part epoxy, I use water. And I'm using my Hypocarno, my original, <laughs> the OG, um, in the background, my original Hypocarno custom as a reference. So now I'm just sculpting different parts of the face, different horns, different effects it has all over his body. So my husband and I listened to you in the previous two videos, um, the complaints and the advice about the music. So my husband's rewritten or re-recorded all the music and it should flow a lot better for you so I hope you enjoy. <laughs> different back armor. I gotta keep moving him this entire time to make sure everything all the parts still flow then nothing is getting in the way of the movement of the toy. And I gotta keep placing him down to see if he's top heavy. So there he is all sculpted and it still works. So he's base coated now and ready for his first layer of paint. I'm starting off with a cream for his underbelly. And I'm using um, Citadel paints for a full Warhammer. I absolutely love this paint. Word of warning, if you use this paint, you won't ever go back. It's the best paint I've ever painted with. Now I'm going over with a more yellower shade of cream. And now the red tones. The 
the footage is a bit blurry, but this was before I was able to upgrade my camera, so I've now got an upgraded camera. The footage will be much improved in not my next sculpture, but the sculpture after that. It will be improved. I've already recorded so much footage. So yeah, I promise footage will be better in the future. And we're just painting the horns. Um, it's not quite a true black, it's like a brown black. I have to keep moving the parts through the drawing process just to make sure the paint isn't built up in areas and will prevent it from moving or stick. Um, especially around the back of the head where the skull slides over the back of the skull, I guess that's how you say it. There's a lot of chipping that can happen if the paint's too thick. on the little feetsies. These snap actions are so cute. So here I am sort of dry brushing the stripes on. Um, the effect in the references is a very speckledy sort of stripe, so I'm getting that effect by dry brushing the stripes on. doing the teeth. Again I have to be very very careful about how much paint I put on because if I put too much on it's gonna stick and just make the snap action not work as well. Also if I put too much it's gonna just chip off anyway. So minimal here. I'm also using a paint called Ultramat. It's a very strong paint and I quite like the white because it goes on in one coat um, over black. It doesn't need many coats which is fantastic when you don't want to do too many layers. So we're just doing the eyes now. The little claws with the true black.
I'd see him almost fully painted. Now I'm going in with a gold because I kind of want the gold, uh, the eyes to be a little shiny and metallic looking. So I'm actually going to be using two tones of gold. of the chibi hypocarno. He of course still works, his snap action still snaps. So, what I wanted to talk to you about is I'm currently having a giveaway over on my Patreon. I am giving away the chibi hypo giga. So he of course all still works as well, his snap action still snaps. And I would like to be doing giveaways every four months of things I have made. So if you'd like to support my channel growing and be investing in better equipment to make my sculptures with, um, yeah, I have a Patreon, and of course, the more Patreons I have, the bigger sculptures I can give away. So, yeah, please check that out. So, my next video is, of course, I'll be making the Nyark Trophy. Um, hopefully, I'll be doing an event challenge with Anthomnia for it, where you compete to win the trophy. But I'll talk more about that in the next one. So, yeah, see you all then. Bye!